you, Father, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I am Dee Edwards and I am anointed to push, pray, prophesy and to teach leaders to profit in business and in life. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you guys so much for catching the replay. So listen on today's broadcast, I really want to talk to you guys about temptation, temptation, temptations and how the enemy used those um, areas to enter in. So let's talk about this. Hello, you guys. Let me know who's watching. Thank you guys so much for sharing this broadcast out. This is going to be an amazing message on today. Hello, Andrea. Hey, April. What's up, man? Yeah, hey, Sophia. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And thank you to all of um, our followers. If you guys are not officially connected with us, be sure to follow us on social media, preferably on Instagram, Facebook, and turn on your notifications. Peace of mind for you too. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you guys so much for sharing out this broadcast. Thank you guys for sharing out. Hey, Tanya. God bless you. Hello, Carlita. Hey, Felicia. God bless you. Thank you guys so much for hitting the share button. Hey, Tara. God bless you on today. I am going to give social media a few moments to build the audience and we're going to get right into the message on today. La, 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 la. Let's see. I'm going to share this out. All right, so on the count of three, one, two, three. Hey, Danielle, God bless you. Hallelujah. This is going to be an amazing message on today. Uh-oh. Hey, hello. Social media is not letting me share my own message out. God bless you guys so much. We're going to be coming out of Luke really fast. Okay. okay, so we're going to be coming out of Luke 4, starting at verse number 1. God bless you guys. God bless you so much. You know, during this uh, actual broadcast on today, I want to be talking to you guys about temptation, temptations, and how there are two um, keys and two ways that the enemy enter into your life. So it's very important that you secure these areas of your life and you create boundaries so that the enemy will not enter, um, um, enter in. Because the Bible said that the Lord will always give you a way of escape. So go to Luke 4, starting at verse number 1. It said, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. And it's important for you to understand that he was full of Holy Spirit. So oftentimes the devil is not tempting people who are not connected to God. He is not tempting people who are not full of Holy Spirit, who are not full of power, or who are not called to minister to the gospel, minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. He usually pull on those individuals who have a call in an assignment on their life. So the Bible said that Jesus was full of Holy Spirit. So that's why you should not be amazed that the enemy is using the areas in which you have been delivered from. The enemy is using the areas in which you, um, that you would, uh, that, that in your, in your own, in your former life would have fallen prey to. And so now while you're full of Holy Spirit, full of power, many people feel that they are exempt from the temptation, that they are exempt from the struggle. So the Bible said that Jesus, full of Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Watch this. And so God began to tell me is that the enemy will always attempt tell people are based upon based upon who he have called them to be it's not necessarily about the the sexual desires it's not about the addictions it's not about the habits it's about who god have called you to be and that's why the enemy is allowed to uh, that's why the enemy tempt you is because of who you are and who you are who you will grow to become 
So we get caught up a lot of times in the areas in which we fall short. We get caught up in the areas in which we struggle with, but actually it's not in that area. It's in us becoming because the more that you become like Christ, it seems like the more that you are tempted with things of the world. It seems like the more that you want to revert back or to go back to the old person. And so when you are full of power, full of glory, full of the anointing, that's when you are tempted to, to, uh, to go outside of God's will. That's why you are tempted by certain things. That's why the enemy will have us bound to secret sins because of who we are and who he recognized we will become. Because the Bible said that that Jesus was tempted when he came from the Jordan River and the Jordan River was the place where he was baptized. The Jordan River was the place where Jesus was affirmed. The Bible said that when he came up out of the water uh, the Lord said, God said that this is my beloved son whom you are, whom I am well pleased. So Jesus had received the affirmation and then he was led in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So don't be surprised as soon as you answer your call, as soon as you said that you're going to live for God, as soon as you say that you're going to do something for God, then you are tempted. Okay. You are tempted. And so the enemy, uh, his, his job and his role is to kill, steal, and destroy. And so anything that you engage in that will kill, steal, or destroy from the power in which God have placed in you or who God have called you to be, you have to understand that it is a trick from the, from the devil. So it's not, so don't pay attention as much to the, the sexual desires or, or, or those habits or those addictions. Pay attention to who you are becoming. Lord have mercy on who you are becoming because the more that you become like Christ the more that the enemy he comes after you but watch this the enemy cannot overcome you with the temptation why it's because you are full of Holy Spirit <laughs> because you are full of Holy Spirit the Bible said that Jesus was full of Holy Spirit and I believe that's why he was able to resist uh, the temptation he was able to resist the devil he was aware because why because he was full of power so the more that you grow like Christ, the more that you become like him, the more the enemy tries to pull you off track. However, you have enough power, you have enough anointing, you have enough glory inside of you to resist the tricks and the traps of the enemy. Watch this. Then Jesus, full of Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River and he was led by the spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Now listen to the second area, the first area that the enemy would try to tempt you in and he uses to enter into your life will always be your identity. It will always be your identity. Watch this. It will be your identity. And the second one will be your condition. It said that at the time, he ate nothing at all. And when he became hungry, that's when the devil, uh, the devil entered in. So Satan tried to use the condition of, of Jesus to enter in. And so that's what the enemy is trying to do with many of you all. He is trying to enter in based upon your condition. The enemy can get you wired up. He can get you off course when you uh, continue to allow your condition to make you feel a certain way. So Jesus was hungry. So guess what? the devil decide to do he it said then the devil said to him if you are the son of god tell this stone to become a loaf of bread he tried to tempt jesus based upon his condition so the enemy always tried to use our condition he will use your your financial circumstance he will use your family he will use your business he will use your he will use your kids he will use your condition he will use your circumstance and he will try to present an answer based upon your actual condition. He said that if you be the son of God, so there, there he was, there he was talking to Jesus about his identity. 
And that's why the enemy would say, if you are really a minister of gospel, uh, uh, of the gospel, if you're really a leader, if you're really an ambassador for Christ, if you really love God. And so, you know, so he started using, he started using uh, uh, your identity even against you. That's why it is important that whatever area that you struggle with in your life, especially when it comes to your identity, is that you allow God to take those voided areas of your life and to fill them up so that that when the enemy come, we know that he's going to come. You would know how to resist him in the time of evil. The devil will always use the lowest place. He will always come in at the lowest time of your life. The listen, the Bible said that he was that Jesus was led. Watch this into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. But he was not actually tempted until, watch, he uh, in, until he became hungry. <laughs> that was that was the that was the first time that Jesus was tempted. He was led there by the spirit, but he wasn't actually tempted until his condition, something in his condition said. Something in his body said, something in his bank account said that he needed something that it looked as if he was absent of it. Because at the time when Jesus was led in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said that he didn't eat anything at all. So there was nothing for him to eat at that time. But it wasn't until he became hungry that the devil tried to feel him. And you have to be careful about where you are in your low times in your life. You have to make sure that when you are in need of money, that you don't do anything to get it. Because that's one of the things that God had to break me from. I was used to being this, uh, the, the, this, this street girl that I knew how to get money easily. And so the Lord had to say, D, as I am raising you, there are some things that I'm going to have to break off of your life because the enemy will try to use your same desire for wanting to have money even when you come to the kingdom of God. So I have to break you and I have to, I have to curve your appetite and I have to show you that you cannot serve me and money. And you're going to have to choose to allow me to be your God. So there were some things that God had to break off of my life because I could have easily taken those same desires that I had when I was out in the street. I could have taken them into the kingdom of God. Yes, I believe that you can be saved and paid. However, I understand that my, my first priority is always to God. And I'm not willing to do anything in order to get money. I operate only in my purpose. So when there are things that are presented to me that is not inside of my purpose, I know how to resist them. I know how to say no to them. Why? Because I am no longer driven by money. I am driven by my purpose. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ministering. I'm teaching you something right now because I need you to understand how the enemy comes into your life and he will use your, your conditions. And oftentimes he will also try to use that thing that you love while you were in the world. So if you love sex while you were in the world, being a believer, being sold out for God does not erase the fact that you love God. What happened is, is that you have an opportunity to utilize self-control. Now you have a fruit of the spirit, which is discipline, which you did not have when you were out in the street. So now the Lord is showing you, OK, yes, you had a you had a, 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 a appetite, a sexual heaven increasingly <laughs> um, sexual appetite when you were out in the world. So you did anything to fulfill it. You did anything to fulfill it because you were not able to control or curb your appetite for sexual things because you didn't have no power. <laughs> you didn't have no glory. You, you went 
and operate in your anointing. So that's why it seemed as if the sexual appetite was overtaking you. But now that you are a believer, you may still have the same appetite, but you also had a fruit of the spirit. Oh, God, I'm chicken. You also have a fruit of the spirit, which is self-control. And so you realize that, hey, I have this appetite, but I know that I can't just do what I want to do because I serve my purpose and not this appetite. <laughs> when you are tempted, it's about making a choice. It's about making a decision who and what you are going to serve in that moment. See, that's why that's why God never said that you were not going to be tempted. The spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness to be tempted. However, Jesus knew, uh, however, God knew that Jesus had enough power inside of him to resist the temptation. And so that's why the Bible said that when you are tempted, never say that it is God that bring on the temptation. The temptation comes from what? Our own desires. And so the enemy, he just bring up those desires when we're in our low place, <laughs> when we're in our, watch this, in our hungry place. <laughs> the enemy will stir up that appetite when you are in your hungry place. You may be hungry for influence. You may be hungry for money. You may be hungry for people to watch your life. You may be hungry for a husband. You may be hungry for a business. You're just hungry. And so the enemy will use your own appetite to tempt you to pull away from the things of God. So the devil did not, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The devil did not have an entry point until Jesus became hungry. He was already in the wilderness, but the entry point or the access or the door to enter in could not be open until Jesus became hungry. And when Jesus became hungry, that's when all hell broke loose. <laughs> However, Jesus had what had enough in him to resist. Thank you guys for sharing this out. Watch this. It said, then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. So hungry means that I need something to eat. And so the devil, what did he try to do? He tried to turn. He tried to tell Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He tried to tell Jesus to use Holy Spirit <laughs> to turn the stone into a loaf of bread. Listen, the devil had no power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to turn the stone into a loaf of bread. He tried to make Jesus use the power that was inside of him to turn the stone into a loaf of bread. De the devil had no ability to create. The devil had no ability to provide. The devil had no ability to satisfy the hunger. He, had, he wanted to use the power that was inside of Jesus in order to satisfy his quench. So I'm telling you today that the enemy want you to use what is inside of you in order to quench your own appetite. It is a trick. It is a trick from the, in from the enemy. Yes, it is a trick. It is a trick. He had no power to create. The Bible said, he said, if you are the son of God, Talking about his identity, tell this stone to become a, a loaf of bread. Well, devil, why don't you turn it into a loaf of bread then? Why don't you turn it into a loaf of bread? He couldn't. He couldn't turn it into a loaf of bread. He literally does not have any power. He has authority, Lord have mercy, but no power. I almost ran up out of here. He have no power, but he have authority. Ooh, uh. 
He had no he had no power to turn the stone into a loaf of bread, but he knew that Jesus had power. And that's why that's why the Bible said that that Jesus he rose with what? Oh, power in his hand. So Jesus had the power to turn it into a loaf of bread. You have the power to go and get money. You have the power to create. You have the power to operate in your authority, but you need to do it under the direction of the Holy Spirit. So if God is not leading you, then you don't use what God has put inside of you and on you to fulfill your own desires. Jesus had the power to turn the, the stone into a loaf of bread to satisfy his temptation, to quench his, his hunger. He had, he had the ability to do that. But you are not supposed to use your power of authority outside of the commandments of God. For your own selfish gain. Woo! Lord have mercy. So, so listen, that's why we got to be careful, even with the influence that we have. I see so many times that people misuse their influence. I see that people misuse their money. I see that people mishandle their name. They mishandle what God have placed on their life. They mishandle it because they have a urge or they have a desire. They have a hunger inside of them. And so instead of pulling on the power of the Holy Spirit in order to resist the temptation, they use what God has placed on their life for their own selfish gain. Okay. Okay. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. <laughs> so the scripture said in verse number four, but Jesus told him, no, the scripture said that people do not live by bread alone. It is, that's why it's important that you understand that the enemy always come in your life to twist what God has placed on your life. He is a deceiver. He is the father of lies. So the devil would make things up. That's why it is important that you understand when to apply the scripture. Lord have mercy. Now this is going, this is going to hurt somebody right here. You got to learn a, a, a when. And where to even apply scripture. Human check out. You got to know when and where to apply the scripture. Because the devil had a scripture. And so the devil, so Jesus could have instantly used what God had placed on his life to satisfy that scripture. But that was the wrong that listen, it, it was it was the right word, but at the wrong time. Oh, God, God, Lord have mercy. Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? It was the right word, but it was at the wrong time. So that's why Jesus said, let me find the right word for the right time. The timing says that man does not live by bread alone. <laughs> So you have to understand and, uh, and know when, when what scripture applies to your life and your circumstance in that particular moment. That's why the Bible talks about false prophets. Because prophets can have the right word, but if they deliver it at the wrong time, Listen. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. All right. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says people does not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I would give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I would give it all to you if you will worship me. So the devil again was looking at the condition of Jesus and said, okay, if he don't want bread, then he must want material gain.
So Jesus, if his heart was not in the right place, he could have easily accepted what he saw. If his motives wasn't right, if he didn't have self-discipline or self-control, he could have used that moment for gain and for increase. And so that's why it is important that you have to test your own motives and make sure that your motives are right when you are engaged in anything. Make sure that your motives are right because the enemy is using that in which we desire to try to bring in a false illusion of provision. A false illusion of provision. A false illusion of provision looks like looks like Jesus becoming hungry, the devil showing up and saying, turn this into bread. And it looks like if Jesus wasn't aware that God was coming in to meet his need. It was a false illusion of provision. And oftentimes, this is the trap that many believers fall into. It's the false illusion of provision. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just like when Eve was in the garden, what God had given her was more than enough. What God had given them in the garden, it was more than enough. But Eve said that I wanted more. So she felt like what God had provided for her her and her family in the garden was not enough and so she desired more and she fell into the trap of false she fell into the false uh, uh, provision or the false illusion of provision by saying that I want more you had not even utilized properly what you had access to but you wanted more it's the false illusion of provision and so it's important that you do not fall. Hey, Miss Edison, you got to make sure that you don't fall into that false illusion in that trap. Just because just because you have a need and then all of a sudden your ex-boyfriend comes in the picture. Provide for you. And you ain't realize it was a trap and you end up being worse off because you accepted that. But if you would have just waited two more days, although it hurt to wait them two more days, you would have had more provision. So you want to make sure that you are not, watch this, that you are not being tempted to sell or to give away your birthright. Esau gave his birthright away. Why? Because he was hungry. Lord have mercy. Are the people of God listening? Thank you for sharing this out. Are you listening? Hello, somebody put a one on the screen or something. Let me know that you're here. Are you listening? Again, the enemy stole this man's birthright. Why? Because he was hungry. The Bible said that he had been out. That he had been out hunting and been working basically all day. He came home and he saw that his brother was at home cooking. And he told his brother that he was hungry. And his brother said, I have exactly what you need. But in order for you to get what you need, you got to give me something in exchange. And at the time, because of the uh, because of Esau's hunger, he was not mindful as to what he was giving away. He wasn't mindful as to what he was giving up. And many times the enemy is able to steal and he's a thief in your life because you're not realizing what you are exchanging for a moment of satisfaction. This man exchanged his entire birthright for one bowl of soup. So yes, it fulfilled him in that moment. 
it. But he didn't realize that the next day he was going to be hungry or the day after that or the day after that. He didn't have no more provision after the false illusion of provision. So you want to make sure that you are not exchanging what God has meant to bless you and what's on your life for a moment of satisfaction and a moment of fulfillment. And the enemy would normally come in the natural to come after something that was meant to be spiritual. So the two key ways that the enemy will always try to get you is with your identity and with your conditions. And I'm telling you as a mouthpiece of God that I am not on here talking for my own gain. I'm talking as a warning that you have to be careful that when you are hungry and when you are in desire for the next thing that you are not willing to trade your birthright that you are not willing to exchange that which is holy that which is righteous for temporary satisfaction because whatever the devil is trying to get, get, give to you, you best believe that it would not satisfy you. You best believe that it's not longevity. You best believe that it's going to put you in a worse condition. Come on, do I have anybody on here who can testify? I can testify myself that what seemed good end up hurting us in the long run because we ignored the signs of God, because we ignored the voice of God, because we were looking for temporary satisfaction. And you got to be careful when you are looking and seeking for a platform, a title, and you're looking for kudos from your peers because the enemy will make you sell your birthright. The enemy will make you give up the position and the power in which God uh, God have placed on your life for temporary satisfaction. Telling you. So I pray now that you are able to withstand the wiles and the tricks of the enemy and that you would be like Jesus and you would know the right scripture for the right timing of your life and that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of pressure. And watch this. It said that when Jesus replied with the last scripture, it said that, that when in verse number 13, it said that when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, this is important to listen, that when, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until when the next opportunity came. So just because you are not being tempted today or you feel as if this message is irrelevant to you, uh, you, best, uh, you better understand that the Bible said that there's going to be another opportunity when the devil tries to come in and you got to understand uh, your weakness. You got to understand where you fall prey. You got to understand the things that you like uh, and the things that you desire. So when the enemy create an opportunity for him to use utilize his authority in your life you are mindful you got to understand that even when he say or when she say hey to you you got to know when that hey is a trick you got to learn how to look one time and don't you dare give that double look y'all know yeah, I know when y'all seeing somebody cute or somebody that's attractive, you may look that one time, baby, but that second look, it may get you in trouble because of who you used to be in the world. And that's why it's important that you understand you because the enemy is always coming after the thing that God has delivered you from. The enemy is always coming after the thing that God have rescued you from. You better know. You better know your place in God. You better know when, 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 uh, 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 what get underneath your skin. What is your weakness? The thing that you're struggling with. You better know it. Some, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta walk and see, and you gotta tell yourself to keep looking forward. Sometimes you gotta pick on the phone, pick up the phone. You gotta pick up the phone 
and you call somebody be like, hey, what you doing? That, that, that's your boundary that you are establishing so that you can get far away. You start creating your own boundaries in your life. Because what God wants to pour out and what God wants to do in your life, uh, it is so big, it's so major that you don't have time for minor, th minor things to get you caught up. I know that you love the Lord, but please understand that the devil, he's only leaving for a moment until another opportunity for him to come in. You love God with all of your heart. You full of power, full of glory, but don't think that you so big in God that you won't fall. Don't think that you so big in God and you got it all together just because you know every scripture. Because if you ain't being tempted, you really ain't full of Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Y'all, <laughs> listen, Rikita, I need you to put them running legs up there. <laughs> because if you are not being tempted, you are not full of Holy Spirit. You are not full of power in it. The enemy don't see you as a threat. He's coming after those who are full of power, who love the Lord, who fast, who pray, who worship God. Yeah, you got a heart for God. Your heart beat for God. Lord, have mercy. Because Jesus, what? Jesus, he could have been at any other time, been taken into wilderness, but it was after he was full of Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> the Bible said that uh, that the dove, that Holy Spirit, uh, you know, came upon him during the baptism. <laughs> so he went led into the wilderness before that time. He was led into the wilderness when he was full of power, full of authority, full of glory, full of the anointing. People of God. <laughs> So just be careful, be careful, be mindful. Like I tell my daughter and I tell my son this all the time. Sometimes he'll be walking with his phone, looking at his phone, watching whatever on his phone. And he's not aware of his surroundings. And I try to tell him, look, Mike, while you're being distracted by what's here, you're not paying attention to what's around you. And somebody can easily come and grab you. And so I'm saying this to say is that you have to be mindful of your spiritual environment. And you have to make sure that you are connected with people that can check your environment as well. Who can check your environment. You got to be surrounded with people. That can, that can speak into your life that even when you don't see, they see for you. That's why you're connected to this ministry so that you can hear the, the word of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. Because a lot of people have an opportunity to hear the message, but when you hear the message, it's time for you to get suited and booted. So I just wanted to bless you with this word on today. I pray that you receive the word of the Lord on today. And I just pray that in a time of evil, because you are dressed with the whole arm of God, that you're able to withstand the wiles of the enemies, that you're able to recognize the strategies of the enemy, that after the battle, the Bible said that you'll still be standing firm, that you'll still be standing strong because you are dressed with the whole arm of God. No matter what come upon you, you have an opportunity to utilize the word of God to help you to overcome the areas in which you're tempted to overcome the areas in which you may, uh, that the enemy may try to enter into your life. The Bible said that God would always give you a way of escape. You have enough discipline in you. You have enough glory, enough anointing, enough power inside of you to resist the enemy. You have the opportunity to choose what's right. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just heard God say that, that, that some of you all are not tempted with sexual things or bad habits or things like that, but you may be tempted with integrity. In, in integrity, doing what's right when nobody's watching. That may be what God wants to deal with you about. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Integrity. Yours may be how you treat people. Keeping your word. Keeping your commitment. It may be the way that you manage what God is giving you. 
Come on. Temptation is not just sexual bad habits or addiction. I can be tempted to spend something that God told me not to spend. I can be tempted to buy something that God told me not to buy. I can be tempted to uh, try to cheat uh, like the tax collectors did. I can be tempted to do those things. Those are the things that I can be tempted to do. Okay, so it ain't just necessarily. And I think it's important that I had to say that because I feel in my spirit that some of you guys are saying like, oh, well, I don't struggle with this, this and that. All right, you got it all together. You got it. Look like you covering yourself then. <laughs> but I need to cover another blood. I need the blood, the blood, the blood. <laughs> cover me, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God bless you guys on today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. Thank you for hitting the share button. Thank you so much for your hearts, your love. God bless you on today. Hello, Regina, Rakita. Tara Tucker. Hello. God bless you. Hey, Wilhelmina. Hey, Miss Wanda. I love you guys so much. Have a fantastic day. Toodles for now.